then on to our next topic. Um, this topic is going to be dealing with understanding copyright in, in architectural buildings. Who owns the copyright in the drawings to your house? What, what, what one can do to own the rights in their drawings? Um, so i just introduce our speakers. Uh, the first speaker is Maureen. Uh, Maureen is a senior associate in our trademarks department. She specializes in trademark prosecution, brand enforcement, and IP commercialization, as well as litigation, which includes name objections, opposition, infringement matters, copyright, and passing of related matters. And uh, to assist Maureen in, in her talk, we've got a guest speaker. We're privileged to have Muriti join us from Picha uh, Architects. Muriti's architectural journey started at the Nairobi Institute of Technology, where he obtained a diploma in architecture. He joined Nelson Mandela University, where he did his undergraduate and postgraduate degrees in architecture. Um, Muriti joined NOH Architects, where he gained experience working on some of the most iconic buildings in Port Elizabeth that include Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium, the Walmart Library, among other projects. Um, uh, the entrepreneurship spirit caught up with him, and he established Future Architects in 2015 in Port Elizabeth. Uh, please can I welcome our guest speakers onto the stage. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our discussion this morning. I hope it will be fruitful and you will have some important key points to take home today and you'll have an interactive session. As Tando has mentioned, um, I'm joined by Marithi uh, Kugu, he's an architect. He's going to give us a um, nice practical in, um, insight into how the architectural space works and we can then try and link that up nicely with how copyright um, comes into play. So without further ado, we're going to step right into it. Um, do you know who owns the copyright to your house? That's what we're trying to unpack today. Um, Marithi, I'm going to start off with uh, this beautiful building here that you've designed and you've so graciously allowed us to use in our presentation. Tell me, if I'm a client, I come to you, I want to build this magnificent building. What is the first step? Where do we start so that I can actually get to build this house? Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Tando, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I definitely look forward to a very interesting discussion on uh, this topic. Um, basically, our role as an architect is to convey the ideas of the client when they come to us and they tell us the type of building that they want, to translate them and put them on paper, on a drawing or on a model, so that they can be visually uh, reflected. And uh, this can be done for engagement with the client or with other consultants uh, that may be in the project engineers, quantity mm -hmm. surveyors, and further on with the contractor when he's building it. He needs to be able to visually understand the ideas of the client. Yeah. yeah, so that's the general journey and role of drawings in um, in, in engaging with, uh, with the client. This, uh, this project is a, a project we've just, we are currently working on where it's a concept design and that's the visual model that we had presented. That's a concept design model. And uh, the other one is a, a floor plan. So these are just examples of the kind of drawings we would use when we engage with plans. Fantastic. Marithi, I like what you say when you talk about taking the idea of the client and putting it down into a conceptual visual representation. That's very important for copyright because copyright cannot based in ideas. The, the, the idea has to be reduced to material form in order for copyright to exist and that is one of the requirements for copyright. So it has to firstly be a work, it has to be reduced to material form which is tangible that one can see what the idea is about and then obviously it has to be original and not be copied from someone else. So. I'm going to try and bridge that gap where we're going to look at architecture and copyright. And I'm going to do like a copyright 101. So just briefly understanding what is copyright. When we're talking about copyright protection, what are we talking about? And where does um, architecture fit into that? So starting with different types that can be, well, works that can be protected. The Copyright Act provides that there are nine different types of works that can be protected. And one in particular, which we're dealing with today, are, is artistic works. Now the Act specifically states that artistic works includes plans, drawings, photographs, paintings, those are the kind of um, architectural works, architectural buildings and models, those are actually specified in the Act and that is where the architectural um, space comes into play. But then who owns this particular copyright? The general rule is that the person who creates the work is the copyright owner and the copyright holder. And therefore, you may find that in, in architectural space, where perhaps you have different architects working on a design, you may find that you have co-authors. Marithi, I don't know if that particularly happens in, in that kind of space. Do you have two different types of architects working on different designs? 
Yes, it's very possible. Uh, you could have a project where there's more than there's more than one architect. For example, there would be a design or concept architect mm. and another architect who's the implementing architect who carries out the construction side of the, of the project. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's quite important to know that if you ever have to look back to decide who actually is the the owner of the copyright, you need to identify which 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 architect worked on that particular plan or drawing. Um, but what can what does it mean to have the copyright? What can one do? So the entitlements of copyright are simple: is that you can reproduce the particular uh, work, so the, the the architects can redraw it, um, you can adapt it and change it, you can publish it um, elsewhere. So they generally control what can be done with that particular type of work. Um, and that's, that's quite important as well to know when infringement comes to, into play. And we're going to talk about infringement now, that if somebody else does one of those entitlements, so they reproduce the work, they copy it and, and, and reproduce it somewhere else, then they are infringing on, on the architect's copyright. Um, and generally, the artistic works um, based for a period of 50 years over the lifetime of the author. That's also something that's important, which is different from normal intellectual property, other forms of intellectual property, in that copyright does have an expiry date, essentially. So when that work is created, that date is very important to be able to know when it actually is going to, um, to expire. And once it expires, there are other forms of, of protecting that particular plan by designs and registering a, a design, and that's another form of intellectual property. Okay, so briefly on remedies, what can one do if somebody infringes on their trademark? They can go to court, get an interdict to stop the other person from, from, from infringing on their copyright. They can seek damages or royalty in the form of royalties, and these royalties would be what a licensee would have paid in order to make use of that particular design. But um, obviously in, in, in construction and architecture, it's very rare that a court will ask for a demolition of a building. Ideally, the court will, that, that's why it, it's more of a compensatory kind of remedy. The court will always look more towards that than to try and build, you know, bring down your house kind of thing. Okay, so defenses. So say as someone, then the architect says, you're infringing on my copyright. What can you do to say, look, sorry, I'm not, and I'm not liable to, to, to you. Um, the general defense is that if you use particular work, um, for, for purposes of review or in private use or private study or for reporting current affairs, you're generally not infringing on copyright. However, there is a specific defense in the Act that relates to architectural works. And it states the following, I'm just going to read it out for us. The copyright in a work of architecture or in relevant drawings shall not be infringed by the reconstruction of that work in the same site in the same style as original. And I've highlighted same site and same style as original because it's very key to the reconstruction of work. Essentially, this is a practical kind of um, provision that if a client goes and approaches an architect and asks to build a house, you building your house on that site that the architect has prepared the plans for in the same style that he is initially drawn up, you won't be infringing on, on, on the architect's copyright. I mean, you can only imagine if you wouldn't be able to build your own house because you're infringing on your, cop on, on your architect's copyright or you have to find your architect in order to get, get permission to build your own house. So we're, we're going to refer back to that provision um, in a moment. Now, speaking of the transfer of copyright, of, of getting the copyright from your architect, there are two ways in which copyright can be transferred. Firstly, by assignment, it's an assignment agreement, meaning that the entitlements that the architect has, being to reproduce, etc., will all of them will be transferred to the client. Essentially, then the architect has no entitlements in respect of that copyright. Another form is through a license, meaning that the, the architect retains the copyright, but the client then has the license to make use of those particular drawings for the purposes of building their house. And essentially, what's important to, to, to note there, I'm um, just going to go back for a moment, what's important to note there is that when the client gets a license, they must have paid the architect in full. And, the re and that comes from a particular agreement in the architectural sphere, which is called the Professional Client Consultant Agreement. And Marithi, please can you explain to us what the PROXA is about and where it comes into play, why it's important for you in your, in your field? Yeah, the Professional Client Consultant Agreement is a proxa document that uh, I have come to rely on quite uh, re regularly in, the pro in my projects with uh, my clients because it's a very concise, robust, and well-defined uh, agreement that protects both the architect mm. and the client. And um, it is overlaid very well with the 
architectural council's uh, regulations on how the sequence of the architectural work goes around. Mm -hmm. So I must say um, it's not a mandatory agreement. Uh, there are many types of agreements that clients can use with their architects, uh, but it's one that I have come to rely on as quite a robust document mm -hmm. using, uh, on our projects. On your projects. And what I liked when I went and I read through um, this agreement, I wanted to specifically see if it refers to copyright, and it does. So it specifically says that the consultant will retain the copyright in the architect of all the documents or the designs prepared for by him for the project. However, the client will have the right to use these particular documentation for the sole purpose of its intended use being to build your house. However, the client is entitled to this information collected by the consultant and paid for by the client. So that is quite important is that the client must have made payment to the architect in order to have the full license of of, um, of, of the drawings. And, and that's what we've highlighted there. So the key point to take on there is that the client, the architect must be fully paid and that the license is only to make use of those drawings in respect of building your property on that site in which the architect has created the drawings in the same style as the original. I.e. if you change those drawings and you build it on, a, on, on your mom's site, for example, you're likely to infringe on the architect's copyright. Okay, so we've also highlighted here on the Royal Institute of British Architects. The reason why we've looked into the UK law is that the UK law and the South African architectural law are quite similar, one stems from the other. So we often look to the UK to see how they deal with some of the issues that pop up, especially when, you read, when we're um, looking at copyright infringement and the like. Marithi, you are a member of the RIBA. Can you perhaps tell us if you've heard of any instances where you, we have had some form of copyright infringement and what, how, the, how the RIBA has dealt with those kind of cases? Yes, I have definitely come across a case where an architect uh, was commissioned by a client and uh, they carried out architectural work and uh, they got paid the fees. Mm. The client, however, used another architect to the implementation of the project. And uh, the original architect um, thought that the client needed to, re to use him mm. in the implementation. So he sent the client a bill. Mm. Uh, the client, of course, was very unhappy with that and uh, took the case to Riba. Um, and uh, when Riba asked him about it, uh, the original architect thought that there is precedent for it. However, um, the the uh, the when Riba then looked at the original precedent, the original case. They said that the facts are the same, but the difference was that the original architect had not been pay, had been paid the fees, while the the case that was being referred to, the architect had not been paid the fees. So the difference is that. The license um, is re retained by the architect until the moment that the fees for the architect are paid. Yeah. After that, then the license is transferred on to uh, the client. Yeah. yeah. And um, I think another thing that was that, that was highlighted was what if a client pays a nominal fee? Does the license, the full license, go to the client? And ideally, no. I mean, if you're only going to pay a certain portion, it's highly unlikely that you should have the full license to make use of the copyright work. So it's very important to identify what has actually been paid and if it allows you to make use of that full license. Um, okay, so Marithi, there's the Special Planning and Land Use and Gate, um, Management Act. We've been talking about when you want to build your house, what happens, how do you engage your architect, etc., and who owns the copyright. What about instances where people already have existing buildings or homes? Where does this act come into play, and why is it relevant for this discussion? Yeah, the Partial Planning and Land Use Management Act, or SPLUMA, as it's, it's uh, known in the, the industry, is uh, an act that's been passed by um, that will now require anyone who has a property to get a SPLUMA certificate from their local municipality uh, in order to sell the property. Uh, one of the requirements in that to get that certificate is that the, the seller has to have municipal approved plans um, for, it to be, for them to be allowed to sell their property and they must also be using the building for the right zoning that the property is assigned for. Um, the SPLUMA Act is a very contentious act. It's not currently being used um, consistently by all municipalities. It's being uh, debated upon. So there is ad hoc um, utility of it at the moment. Uh, so uh, generally I would advise any property owners um, to have their 
all the properties uh, uh, with the municipal approved plans in the event that the Spluma Act becomes enforceable at some point in the future. No, thank you so much. So that's that's a take home point, guys, is to just make sure that if you already have a house, rather get those municipally approved plans before this act comes into effect, possible. Okay, so we've really kind of rounded up and, and, and just to go back to answer a question of who owns the copyright in your house. Essentially, in summary, the architect, when they prepared the drawings, they will own the copyright to those particular drawings. If you'd like that um, the, the drawings to be transferred to you, then you have to then get an assignment agreement. It's a one-pager agreement basically assigning all those entitlements to you. Um, however, the client will have the right to make use of those particular drawings for the purpose of building that building on the same site in the same style as the original. Any changes, you're likely to run into a copyright infringement situation. And um, then we obviously have spoken about Spluma and then getting those, those particular um, municipal approved drawings. Take on points. Make sure you know who owns a copyright before you make use of any work. I'd rather go and get permission or um, you know, find out exactly who owns the copyright so that you don't find yourself getting into any copyright infringement claims. That being said, IP enforcement is very important. If somebody is infringing on copyright, you um, want to then um, take them on. And we have a program called the Pick Rise Program where we assist people who have copyright infringement claims to help them resolve it in a much more efficient uh, way. Marithi, I don't know if you have any take points from the architectural side. Um, generally, it's to advise anyone who's doing a building and they have to engage an architect to use a reliable agreement, um, industry-tested agreement to uh, get into contract with the architect, like the PROX agreement mm. uh, or similar agreement. Uh, yeah. That definitely protects uh, the client uh, when their interests are at hand on the project. And of course, with any people who have existing buildings, to ensure that if they don't have municipal approved plans, to get municipal approved plans for their buildings. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Marithi, for your valuable thank input. You. Um, it was really well received. Um, I hope that you all enjoyed the discussion this morning. Um, we do have one or two questions on hand, I think, from, from the virtual space. And then after that, if we can't attend to any of the other questions, we're happy to chat after the, after the session. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Marie. Um, we do have some questions, but we're being test of time, so I'm not going to ask all the questions. But I think the main question we're all here for is who owns the house, and I'm glad to know that I own my house. <laughs> Good, yeah. Um, okay, so the first question I just want to know is um, if I uh, have meet an architect that has created a, uh, a plan or a house that I like, um, can I ask that, uh, that architect to replicate, replicate that same design for me? Mm. Uh, yeah, um, look, in theory, you can, as long as the architect has um, given, uh, signed off um, the license to the client, um, and then he can, you can replicate. You can replicate. Uh, the only thing that you must also keep in mind is my advice is for the client to use that house as a pre as a precedent rather than to uh, duplicate it uh, exactly, and then they can customize it to the uh, new client site mm -hmm. and to the. Um, specific requirements that uh, the client would need in their house. I'll just chip in there. Um, so the, the basis to always start off is to look at who owns that copyright. Okay, So the architect owns the copyright, meaning that they can reproduce it, they can adapt it, they can change it up. Um, the client pays for the license for, the, for, the, for that particular work on that particular site. So if the architect then does something new on a different site, then we're looking at a different copyright altogether. So, so that's something to always look back to as to what is the starting point and what, what does that architect actually, what can they do with that particular work that they've created. Right. Before I ask my uh, second question, hmm. I, don't, I just want to uh, go to the crowd. Is there anyone else that has a question uh, that they want to ask before I ask my second question? OK. Um, then just lastly, um, if, if a client appoints another architect, sorry. I just wanted to let's focus on the site first. Mm -hmm. um, if a client after commission the drawings um, subsequently sells the, 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 the site to a third party, um, will the third party be able to make use of those drawings? Should I take that? Okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, okay, so this is a kind of typical scenario where you have a developer in the mix. So the developer asks the architect to prepare the drawings, and the art, then the developer will sell off the, the particular land to a buyer. So the license will be between the architect and the developer. 
And because the developer would have paid the architect this full fee, they will have that particular license. So the Act sp simply saying that Section 15.2 referring to building the work or building the, that construction on the same site and the same style as the original, essentially you should be able to do so, right? Um, but making sure that obviously you don't infringe on, on the initial architect's copyright. Okay. Thank you, yeah, Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Tan. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, guys.